it's Shanna and today I'm going to do a VR to Sylvie at Fairlight Tarot. She previously had done one um, called Decks I Can't Put Down, but she just came out with one that is Decks I Can't Pick Up and I thought that was brilliant because I do have a handful of decks that I struggle to even want to pick up. Um, I don't really want to work with them. They're beautiful and obviously I bought them for a reason, but I just, I can't make myself pick them up and I'm not sure if I want to keep them for that reason. So I thought I would go through them today and in a similar vein as Sylvie, you know, if you have suggestions on um, how I could, how I could work with these decks or how you work with them, that might be inspirational for me. Um, or if you have some fantastic pairing that you love to do with one of these decks and you want to share, that would be that would be helpful. So first one will probably come as a shock because I feel like literally everyone loves this deck. Um, I've only ever heard good things and as it should be because it's a beautiful deck and like I said, I bought it for some reason, but I just, I don't think I've ever worked with it even once. So, first is Roots and Wings. Uh, this deck, um, I bought this one. This is one of her second stack decks. Um, so it came at a little bit of a discount, which is always appreciated. Uh, oops, no, we'll fix that in a minute. These are the backs, and we've all seen this deck. Um, in case you're curious, the reason it's seconds is, I guess they cut kind of weird. You can kind of see the edges there, but it literally doesn't affect the deck whatsoever. Um, I like the way it shuffles. It's a rose petal. It's a bit of a slower shuffle because of that finish, but I don't mind it. And I feel like, especially for this deck, for whatever reason, I like that, that touch. But I just, honestly, I think it's the white space. Um, I've got a couple of the decks from, I, it looks like Ciolo Thomas, but without actually knowing, I think it's Shiloh. That's how I think that name is pronounced, but I could be way off. So Shiloh Thoma, Thomas, um, the herb wit, is it the herb witch? botanical I don't know and she's got line strider she's got winter seer I think she has about four decks I have winter seer and I also have um, is it the other kins man I should have looked at these before I opened or before I started but anyway her decks are similar to this one in that there's a lot of white space and I just think that that's what throws me um, not very good at this. That's okay. Um, I feel like I can't immerse myself in it because of that, I think. And so I don't. I just, I don't know. The size kind of throws me. I appreciate it for like, you know, tactilely. It's easy to hold, easy to shuffle, but I don't feel like it sits well with other decks. Um, and I guess the keywords kind of throw me. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I haven't been able to pull this deck out to use it. Um, this card kind of bothers me. I mean, like I could take it out, you know. This one kind of bothers me. I think these figures kind of bother me in general. They feel kind of threatening, I guess. And yeah, for all of those reasons, I just haven't been able to pull it out and use it. I did try pairing this with my deck because I thought, you know, nature and there's birds in here. Um, but the white just doesn't quite go with the kind of parchment color of mine. 
This card kind of bugs me. I don't know. But I'm not ready to let it go. I feel like at some point I will probably find some deck that's going to look fabulous with it. And I will regret it if I get rid of it, so... I don't know. What is your favorite deck to pair this with? That's what I would like to know. And how do you work with it? You know, do you, is this like a daily oracle for you? Is this more of like a shadow work or... I love this one. That's sweet. Yeah, this one kind of bugs me. I don't know, the figures just throw me. And maybe that's a big part of it. Like this one's beautiful. This is maybe my favorite card in the deck. But anyway, that is the first deck. Fruits and Wings. And as Sylvie said, um, I'll just reiterate here in case you haven't watched hers. Um, this is not a, a deck bashing by any means or, you know, these are not decks I regret buying. I like having them. Um, and I feel like at some point, eventually, hopefully, I'll find something to use them with. Okay, next up is this one, which is maybe a teensy bit of a regret. I'll be honest, only because um, when I backed it, I, may, it might, I don't think it was my first tarot Kickstarter, but it was, it was one of the first, and I did not realize that it was a major it was only arcana. Um, totally my bad, because you know they were fully transparent about it, but I was bummed. I do think, I think I heard that they're going to finish the deck and have all of the miners as well. I don't know the progress of it. I feel like I follow them on Instagram, but I don't think I've seen them in a while, so, or it hasn't come up on my feed anyway. But yeah, uh, Drifting Moon Tarot by Lee White and Grace Celine. I, I do know this was kind of early in my tarot journey, if you will, and I wasn't really sure yet what kind of art would work for me. So I just, I was buying all of the decks. And while this is adorable, it is not something I feel drawn to work with in any capacity. However, because of its storybook kind of essence, okay, you guys are going to think I'm weird, unless you, <laughs> unless you've experienced something similar. My middle daughter has talked recently about wanting to have kids uh, with her husband. And so I have a handful of decks like this one that I think I would love to use with grandkids. Or, you know, like as they get older, if they want to go through my collection of tarot decks, this would potentially be one that they could play with and use. Um, so that's why I'm holding on to this one, but I've literally never pulled it out. I've never pulled a card. I've never shuffled it. I mean, I guess maybe I've shuffled through it because it's not in order, but yeah. Do you guys have this one? I don't think there were a ton of backers, though I could be wrong. So honestly, that was kind of a dumb thing to say because I, I don't know how many backers there were, but I would be curious to find out if they are close to finishing the rest of the cards. Um, the guidebook is small, but I guess, you know, they each get their own page. 21, 20 pages. Um, I don't think there are any spreads. Yeah, no spreads. Fairly basic, but you know, it's a nice little write-up. And it does give you the reversed, so that's nice. The box is nice. Um, I do kind of feel like when people come out with these major arcana decks and then they later finish 
you know, the rest of the deck. I do wish they would have an option to purchase just the rest of the cards. Um, for those of us who previously purchased, you know, the majors so that we could get somewhat of a discount. And I know a lot of them will do a discount if you were a previous, you know, if you were a backer or a previous purchaser, but it just feels wasteful to, to then have these, you know, these 21 cards just sort of lying around. I guess I can use them in journaling, but again, it sort of feels like a forced, something I then have to come up with something to use them for. So that's kind of frustrating. Anyway, next up we have the unknown, Tarot of Unknown Shadows. This one I picked up at a tarot trade table. Um, second edition, 2020. This one did not come, or I didn't pick it up with a box. I think, actually I know it comes with a box because I did reach out to the creator on uh, Instagram and asked for a box, asked if they, you know, if they had one available and if they'd be willing to send it to me. Um, and they were kind enough to send me a PDF file of the box template so that I could have it printed, which, you know, is better than nothing, but, uh, I don't have the patience to spend 24 bucks or whatever on a box. So that file is sitting on my computer, but at any rate, this is the deck. Um, it has gold foiling on the titles, the numbers, and there's usually some kind of part of the image that also is gold foiled. So this one is just, I don't know. Is it that it's too dark? I'm gonna get my glasses. It's not really dark. It's just, I think it feels un focused for one, which lends to the theme, which I appreciate. I like, you know, I feel like for obvious reasons, this could be a great ancestor work deck. Um, but some cards just don't really fit me and what my ancestors would have been. So then that's sort of a disconnect for me. Um, it's beautiful. The cardstock is, is nice. And I, I don't know cardstock, but you know, it's not overly thin. Here are the backs. They're also gold foiled. I don't know. It just, mm, I don't know. I haven't wanted to use it. And I think it's because I don't really, I'm not really drawn to dark, moody decks. Sepia, this one's just weird. I mean, why? was strange to me. It is objectively beautiful. I really like this card. Yeah, I just, I don't know, when I see this, I don't see ancestors, I guess, which obvious. Okay, so then I would should use it for something else. But what else would you use this deck for? I don't know. does not feel like a daily reader to me. And I do think, I honestly think part of it is that the gold foiling, I think it pulls me out of the card. It pulls me out of the image. And so that's a frustration. This might be one that I will probably rehome just because I don't see myself. There are a lot of other options um, that if I wanted to do ancestor work, there are a lot of other options 
that I think would work better for me. So this will likely be one that will not stay in my collection. That guy's kind of creepy. He doesn't really creep me out, but he's a little creepy. Um, the edges are kind of a copper foil or like maybe an antique gold. Anyway, that's that. The book is like a rose petal, which is nice. Also foiled. And there's not a ton for each card, but enough. Get more for the majors than you do the minors. And... Oh, I guess there's actually a second language. I did not realize that. I don't know that, it, that I've ever even opened the book. I think it's a Ukrainian deck? Question mark? I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's done by Dark Cinever. They've done multiple decks. But yeah, and I don't know. Look at this bag. It was kind of perfect. I bought this bag for this deck, so. What do you use that deck for if you have it? Next up is a recent purchase, the Golden Tarot. I really just wanted to try the, the linen cardstock. I never, you know, I had not, I didn't have the old version of this, but the linen cardstock definitely wooed me and I wanted to try it. And it's mass market, so you know, I think it's like 23, 24 bucks, something like that. Um, yeah, it doesn't say, but U.S. Games, here are the backs, which are beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so again, this is not really my style, but I thought, you know, this would be a cool deck for something. I dislike, I feel like, isn't this, um, is it Bosch? Bosch? I feel like this is their artwork, and I'm not a fan. Um, it feels very pokey, very, um confrontational. I, it's not really my thing. The deck itself is beautiful, but, and you know, my lack of art knowledge is going to show when I say this, but it feels very, um, Christian to me. And I, that pulls me out of the tarot mindset. It's not a negative. It's not, you know, it's not a diss. <laughs> it's not really even a complaint. It just is what it is. It, it tends to pull me out. I mean, this is beautiful, but it just feels very, more than I realized, it just feels very Christian and that throws me. So this will very likely be a rehomed deck. I wanted to love it, but I don't. So unless I can think of something specific to use it for, I do not think it will be staying in my collection. I do like this hermit card. And she's pretty. My least favorite card, if we want to go there, I think is the Magician. I think the reason this feels Christian to me is I, you know, I'm assuming this is like early Europe, which that's what, that was the religion. This one's very pretty. I mean, there's a handful that I think are pretty. I just, I don't see myself. I don't, this deck doesn't really talk to me. I don't think this deck is for me. I don't know. Oh yeah. This one just, this one looks like Jesus to me and I've just, mm, I suppose I could use this as like some kind of shadow work deck to figure out why I feel uncomfortable with this. But to be honest, at least at this point in my life, I kind of don't care why it makes me uncomfortable. It's not something I'm interested in exploring. So yeah, that's that. Um, the book, I don't think I've ever even cracked it. Pretty straightforward. You get a page for each card. 
the majors are the same, it looks like. And looks like all of the artwork is sided. I'm wondering if they have spreads in here. No, it doesn't look like there are spreads in here. Unless it's in the beginning. Oh, there are. A few Celtic cross. So anyway, if you, this is one that I probably simply will be rehoming. Not that that's what this, you know, video is about, but if you're interested, definitely feel free to reach out. The Golden Tarot. Uh, bye. Cat Black. Interesting that her name's not on here. Oh, right there. Yes. All right, last one. This one's probably going to also be a surprise because I feel like pretty much everyone loves it. It is the Brady Tarot. Um, this one I bought for a couple of specific reasons. <laughs> I wrote myself a note. Don't sell this. Rachel Pollock wrote the book and you'll regret it later. I bought this deck because she wrote the book. Um, I think she's a brilliant person in the tarot world and... I have a couple of her books and I just thought how unique to have your tarot, you know, tarot guidebook written by Rachel Pollock. How cool is that? Like, how did that even happen? Did this creator like email Rachel and was just like, Hey, hi, can you write my book? Or did they know each other? I don't know. If you guys know how that came about, I would love to hear the story. Um, this is another book I haven't cracked despite wanting it for that very reason. Um, I have not read it, which is, which is a shame. Maybe someday. Um, again, we've got kind of a gold, a matte, well, it's kind of like a satin, uh, edges. This is another beautiful deck. Uh, it is thick, rose petal, and impossible, like I... That's as good a shuffle as you're going to get, unless you have giant hands. So that's a frustration. It is objectively beautiful. This is a deck I think my grandma would have loved because she loved watching nature shows. But the, the keywords pull me out of the card. The keyword in the minors. And I don't know, uh, the artwork is hard for me to sort of decipher what I'm looking at. It's beautiful artwork. Again, this is not, you know, a disparaging video. This is just me saying why it's hard for me to work with. The colors are beautiful. I love it for that. Um, some of them are a little bit hard for me to look at. I do that just bums me out. Like, I don't want to feel bummed when I'm looking at a tarot deck. I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate its honesty. Um, the reality of it is good. I just struggle with it. So how do you guys work with this? Like that, I just, that's too much for me. That would just pull me, you know, if I pulled the three card spread in this one, that would just pull me straight out of it. The end, I, I don't think I could do it. So I keep this one because it's beautiful. Um, I feel like it's kind of an iconic deck and Rachel Pollock wrote the book. All of that being said, if I found something specific to work with this deck for, I think I could, I think I could work around it. I mean, maybe just given what I've said, maybe it would be a good shadow work deck. I don't know why there are reversals in here. Probably because I 
shuffled it stupid. But am I even doing this and can we even see the cards? I don't know. I'm bad at this, you guys. I'm sorry. There. Um, and I actually contemplated buying this deck for months. Went back and forth. Should I or shouldn't I? What version did I want to go for? And if you can hear my washer, I'm sorry. So yeah, those are my decks that I can't pick up. I've literally never even tried to work with this deck. So that's that for this week. Um, I do want to quickly interject and let you know that my, that my tarot deck is on the way. It's been shipped. Um, I did purchase a second box by itself after I purchased the set, uh, the deck, the guidebook, and the box. I purchased a second box because the first one that I sent was not the way I wanted it to look. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that next week's video will be a walkthrough of my deck and then I can, depending on how the guidebook turned out, because that'll be its first draft, I will be able to put up Kickstarter which I'm, I'm leaning towards versus Etsy. So yeah, that's it for this week, you guys. Um, keep an eye open for next week's. Like I said, hopefully that'll be what it is and I will see you then. Bye.